Hi, welcome to the WVU Online Summer Percussion Institute. Uh, I'm Dr. Mike Riccelli, the director of the World Music Performance Center. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be talking to you about a handful of uh, hand percussion techniques uh, over the next couple of videos. Basically, to sort of get you started uh, and get a general idea about the sound of the instrument and how to achieve basic sounds on a variety of instruments. Um, what I first like to talk about is just playing hand drums in general. Uh, the drum that I'm using here is called a Pan Logo drum. The Pan Logo drum is from southern Ghana in West Africa. So if you can imagine roughly the shape of Africa, Ghana's over here on the coast. Uh, this type of drum uses the hands. It's a very thick head attached to uh, a solid body drum um, via these pegs. And in order to achieve this, uh, the sounds on this drum, we're going to use a few different parts of our hand to get three basic sounds. Uh, while you might not have a Pond Logo drum at home, I've sort of selected to start with this drum because it really gives uh, uh, a very clear idea of how to, how to produce these sounds uh, on any percussion instrument. So the first thing we want to talk about is just posture. We want to sit up straight, our hands, uh, our legs down by our sides, our hands and our arms nice and loose, our feet on the ground. And notice I'm going to tilt this drum slightly away from me. It's a hollow drum. So if I put the drum flat on the ground, I don't get a lot of sound out of it. If I angle this drum just a little bit, I get a much deeper, richer bass sound. So I'm going to angle that drum slightly away from me. I'm angling it away because I want to keep my arm in a nice, loose, relaxed, comfortable position. So that way, when I lift my arm, my hand comes down, my wrist stays straight, everything stays nice and loose, nice and relaxed. So my drum is angled slightly away from me, my hands are in a nice position, and now I'm ready, ready to play. Uh, to strike the drum, no matter what drum we talk about uh, over the course of these videos, the stroke is always gonna come the same way. It's gonna start up here on our shoulder by lifting, lifting our arm, lifting up from our elbow, and keeping our, everything in here nice and straight, especially our wrist. Our wrist nice and straight, our hand nice and loose. We're gonna need to do it uh, address the, uh, the energy, direct the energy into our fingertips or the, which part of our hand we're going to use. So this is a nice, loose, relaxed motion here that we're going to use for all the instruments. We're going to look at three basic sounds uh, on each instrument. The first one uh, is very easy, the bass sound of the instrument. The bass is achieved by striking with your, the palm of your hand, this big part, right off the center of the head. So if I've got the center of the head here, I've got my, the palm of my hand here, I'm gonna let this hand strike just to get that nice deep sound. Notice if I leave my hand on the drum, it doesn't resonate as freely. So I wanna make sure that that hand bounces up right off the drum, nice and loose, nice and relaxed, right? Both hands, Bouncing right off the drum head. Again, trying to achieve that low, deep sound. Now, if I move that hand out, if I'm gonna change, I'm gonna keep my motion. I'm gonna change the playing position of the hand. I'm gonna move now, I'm gonna move over to the edge of the drum. And now I'm gonna strike from here on up with my fingers. I'm gonna keep my fingers together. That way it's a nice focused sound, striking near the edge of the drum. And I'm gonna get the open tone of the drum. Notice as I strike, my fingers stay together. If I spread them apart, we don't get that focus, the same focus sound. So my hand, my fingers are gonna stay together, striking near the edge of the drum to keep that sound. Again, we can do it with both hands. That way we get that big sound. If you notice, my arm is keeping the same motion as before for the bass sound. So if I want to alternate just bass and open tone, notice that my motion stays the same every time. So there's two sounds. Each one has a different part of the hand, in a different zone on the actual drum itself. 
if we keep that in mind, if we keep this idea of the different zones uh, in mind, now we're going to move into more of the elusive sound, the slap. If there was a, a different name for this sound, I, you know, I always think I'm going to try to reinvent the name for the sound because a slap is, it really gives the, the, the impression that you have to hit the drum really hard. Um, and you really don't. Just like the other two sounds, it's really important that you just consider the placement of the, the hand on the drum head and which part of your, your hand comes in contact with the drum. Uh, if there's anything you can take away from this video is that a slap is a sound and it's not a volume. So you can play a slap at a very close dynamic, you can play it at a very loud dynamic. The slap doesn't have to be loud in nature. So to achieve the slap, if I have my bass zone here and I have my open tone zone near the edge, I'm going to move my hand close to the center of the head and I'm going to keep my fingers nice and loose, nice and relaxed. So it's almost as if my fingertips are really loose. Right? What's going to happen is I'm going to direct that energy in my fingertips close to the center of the head because I want that dry pop sound. Right? If we think about just the physics of the head for a minute, uh, sound moves in waves, right? So every time if we have a, if we have a tone, we're going to have a, it's going to go across the line. We're going to have a nodal point. So dead center in this drum is a net, is a nodal point. So if I aim for that nodal point, I'm going to eliminate all the tone out of this drum. So if I keep my fingers nice and loose, focused towards the center of the head, right? My fingertips are going to pop or slap or just kind of, kind of come right down, right into the center of the head. Get that nice pop. And incidentally, this part of my hand comes in contact just a little bit with the rim of the drum. Now I'm not ramming my hand in. That's only going to result in a bruise in your hand. That's going to come in just a little bit, just enough to give it that whip-like motion in the fingertips. Now there's a couple of factors that are going to uh, uh, influence your decision about where to put your hand on the drum. Um, the size of the drum head and the tension of the drum head. Also, the size of your hands come into play, too. On a drum like this, which is fairly low, I'm going to have to slide in really far to find that nodal point. On other drums, as we'll talk about uh, in the next few videos, you can sort of adjust that uh, point of contact a little bit depending on where that nodal point is. But for this drum, it's very loose, uh, it's very low, it's tuned very low, so I'm going to aim dead center, let my fingertips come in contact. Notice we can play it softly. And it still sounds different than the tone. At this point, my, my fingertips are still bouncing off the drum just slightly to give it that open sound. If I, if I left my hand on the drum head, I would get a more muted slap, which is what we'll see in the conga video. So now that we've discussed these three sounds, uh, we want to keep the same motion. Let's do a, a very short exercise to get you to working on uh, sound production. We want to really think about the exercise as being the focal point of just moving our hands, the placement of the hands on the head, uh, and what part of our hand comes in contact with the drum. So to keep it simple, we're just going to do four, four of each sound. So we're going to have four bass, four open, and then four slap. Bass, open, slap. By doing that exercise, uh, you can do it very slow to fast to slow, uh, just as you would practice some rudiments. As No matter how fast you get, you want to make sure that that 
stays loose, stays comfortable. If you play it faster, obviously your hands are gonna stay lower. That way you can move a little bit more efficiently around the drum. Uh, in the next couple of installments on technique, we're gonna look at how the sound applies uh, to a variety of different drums as well. Uh, once we have these sort of this principle in mind of about the three areas, the three parts of the hand, we can go and we can look at them on a variety of different drums and discuss uh, specific techniques that are uh, for each of those individual drums. Stay tuned for our next episode.